Hey guys, Prince of Mastodon here. I'm going to do a commentary video for an online multiplayer Realm Total War battle. And this is a historical custom battle. And uh, this particular battle will be, uh, well it doesn't have a name, but this was a very famous, well not famous if you don't follow Macedonian history, but it was a uh, it was an ambush in which the Phokians under Onomarchus ambushed King Philip II of Macedon and delivered him his uh, only, or one of two defeats in his, uh, in his campaigns. So, uh, this is interesting for me because this is the battle in which uh, King Philip II of Macedon lost. And this was an ambush. Um, in any case, uh, this battle doesn't really have a name, as I said, but it happened during the, uh, the Third Sacred War. And this happened because the Phokians, um, they decided to, uh, to desecrate the, the Temple of Apollo in uh, 357 BC in order to, uh, to fund their army. Their, they used a bunch of mercenary troops. And plus, they were being fined by the other Greeks. So they decided to uh, to ransack the Temple of Apollo, and that was not good because the Greeks were very uh, god fearing. And so, anyways, uh, King Philip II in 353 or 354 BC, he decided to uh, go into Thessaly to fight the Phokians. And this guy was allied with the Thessalians, so he came in to help his allies. And um, anyways, King Philip II, one of the, the greatest Macedonians in history. This is the father of Alexander the Great. In uh, 359 BC, he had to uh, develop an army that was capable of fighting off multiple invasions. You had the uh, Athenians, the Illyrians, the Thracians, and the Paeonians. They were all uh, invading uh, Macedon at this time. And um, so King Philip II had to d develop a new army. And he couldn't develop a, uh, a hoplite army because he didn't really have the money to equip his men as hoplites. And he had a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of peasants who he had to equip really fast and on the fly. So what he came up with was this uh, phalanx. Very lightly armored, but they, they were armed with this very long sarissa so they could compete with the, the hoplite armies. And they had a very uh, good uh, cavalry uh, tradition, so he was able to field a very, a very strong uh, cat contingent. Plus with the Thessalian cavalry, he was able to have the best cavalry in Greece. And, um, anyways, this was an ambush. What happened here? This was around, uh, as I said, 353, 354 BC. Um, Onomarchus, he led the Macedonians into this killing valley. And this guy, Onomarchus, he had these, uh, these catapults here. And he led these Macedonians into this killing valley. And so the Macedonian phalanx was ambushed. And they lost tons of troops from these onagers, or from these uh, these catapults, just uh, wreaking havoc on these Macedonians as they were led down this uh, this valley. And uh, the Phokians had the, their own uh, their own uh, phalanx, which is pretty good. They had tons of mercenary uh, hoplite troops too. But uh, the, uh, what's his face, the, the, the Phokian commander knew that in a stand-up fight between his hoplites and the Macedonian phalangites, that the Macedonians would win. So uh, these guys were camping out here, and they led these Macedonians here, where they could have, uh, they could use a better, I mean, they could use the, the terrain to their advantage. That way they could neutralize the uh, the Macedonian and Thessalian Cav. And also in a, in a, in a stand-up fight, like without the, the phalanx formation, the, uh, the Phokians were, were better suited for like individual combat because as I said the Macedonians they were not very heavily armored so um, like mano e mano the, uh, the the hoplite could take on the the phalangite easily like in a one-on-one -on -one fight not involving the you know the, the spears and sarissas so uh, he he sought the terrain advantage to neutralize all the advantages of Macedon and historically speaking this did work Boom! So yeah, so when the uh, the Macedonians were going down this valley, the uh, Phokians were pouring down like artillery barrage, and they were like rolling down boulders on these guys. It was it was very rough. So, anyways, I'll just list the uh, the uh, troop compositions here. Here's the uh, the Phokian army here. Lots of mercenary hoplites and regular hoplites, and they're, of course they're onagers. And I already listed my troops, but anyways. I sent my my light my light infantry and my cav to take this ridge on the uh, on the left flank of this uh, Phokian army, and I, I sent all my phalanx troops down the, the other flank. 
Anyways, my opponent had these, uh, these javelin men in his front rank, so I rushed forward without failing permission to take on his, uh, his javelins before I lost too many troops. And I did lose quite a, min quite a number of troops here. A lot of that was from his barrage, too. Anyways, while that's going on, I've taken this, this height here, and I have my Cretans firing on his, uh, on his Greek cav here. I just want to weaken his, his horse elements before I send in my, all my cabin. And you can see here, uh, my, uh, I have a General's Armored Bodyguard. They represent the Companion Cav, because, um, during King Philip's time, the, uh, the Companion Cav was not that, that plentiful. There were only 500 at this battle, and the rest of his Heavy Cav was composed of the Thessalians. So that's why I, I used General's Armored Bodyguard to represent the Companion Squad. Anyways, we routed his, uh, Greek Cav. And you can see I also routed his, uh, his Peltist with, with my advance up this way. So now, I sent in my cab to take down these, uh, these onagers who have been firing at my guys. And we're gonna route the rest of his, uh, Peltus here. And we're gonna neutralize his onager crew. Meanwhile, he's sending in his, uh, his hoplites to uh, try to deal with my, my cab, but my guys are just too fast. And over here, he had his, um, his armored hoplite, that's where his, uh, general is. This is, um, Ono Marcus. He's right there trying to face my cav, but I have my Cretans firing from this ridge still. I'm just firing into the backs of his armored hoplites. Anyways, I led my my pikemen to the flanks of this uh, this hoplite army here, trying to outmaneuver them. Because with the terrain advantage, his hoplites can't take out my 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 phalanx troops. On level terrain, my my guys will take out his hoplites, but because of the terrain advantage, his guys are better. So I had to outmaneuver him. Anyways, what did I do here? I sent in my my cav to uh, to charge the uh, the rear of this armored hoplite unit. That's where uh, Ono Marcus is, the uh, the Phokian commander. The and there we actually route him. And because he's so close to the border, like th there's no time for them to uh, to uh, rally and come back into the battle. So I'm just gonna let his general go, and I'm gonna use my my cav to save my my phalanx over here. Right now they're being surrounded, see this? They're being surrounded by his hoplites. So I had to take my cav and uh, bail out my, my phalanx. Here I lost my, my pike troops over here. That's because they had the terrain advantage. So my, my pikes did break. So here comes my cav to the rescue. We're gonna charge the rear of these Phokians. And these militia hoplites, they represent the uh, the city-state um, hoplites who uh, who are allied with the Macedonians at this time. So that's what's going on here. Big, big phalanx fight. And I, I'm using my, my light infantry over here. Uh, I'm gonna take this ridge. I'm using my Cretans here. I move them up even even farther. And I'm spraying the backs of these hoplites. Look at that. Ugh. So I'm just using my light infantry to harass his infantry, slowing them down so they don't link up with the rest of this, uh, this phalanx fight here. But I'm gonna keep bashing down these uh, the rears of these uh, Phokians. Boom. See, I feel the second was one of my my favorite commanders in history. Not just because he was related to Alexander the Great, but because he did a lot of great things. For example, um, making this Macedonian army what it was. Prior to this time, the Macedonian army they had a very good, uh, very strong cat contingent, but that's all they had. The rest of their troops. It was pretty pathetic. They had lots of uh, skirmish type troops. So whenever they were invaded, they had to resort to guerrilla warfare. So uh, that's why King Philip came around and rebuilt and reorganized the Macedonian army. Because it was the necessity that dictated this. But um, anyways, here goes my light infantry. There they are. And we're pretty much ruling the battlefield right now. All of his troops are breaking. All he has left are these guys these two units of hoplites, and they're even out of position right now. So I'm just gonna charge down this hill. What's this guy doing? This guy? <laughs> this guy wants to go bye-bye. The Anyways, there we, uh, with a song or two. we route these guys from this, uh, hill. And we rule the battlefield. Uh, clear victory. I'll let you read the results. Um, but, um, in this battle, 
actually. King Philip II lost. As I said, this is one of his, uh, his only defeats. Um, some historians say he only lost one battle. They attribute his two battles to being just one battle. Um, I read that in Richard Gabriel's book about King Philip II. But um, whatever the case, he did lose this ambush. And it was kind of hard for him because uh, he had to uh, rally his troops and get out of there. And it's kind of hard when the enemy has all those, when they have the terrain advantage and they have all those artillery pieces firing at your guys from all sides. And, um, yeah, that was that. But a year later, King Philip II came back. Like, he made a boast that, um, that you know, that he got his butt kicked. But, but he would come back to, uh, to be even stronger. And he would not fall for another ambush again. And that's what happened. He came back and he met the Phokians on the, the Crocus Field. And on that, on that piece of terrain... It was very flat, so the Philkians could not use any terrain to their advantage, and also the Macedonians could use their their companions and also their Thessalian cavalry to uh, to fight the way they fight. That is to uh, use the open field, the flat ground, to surround these these Philkians. And after the battle, Onomarchus was crucified, and every uh, Philkian who surrendered, they were uh, drowned at sea, and that was a punishment for. For, uh, for ransacking the, the temple of Apollo. As I said, the Greeks were very, uh, they were very God-fearing. So when you violated their, their gods, then you were going to be violated with your life. But anyways, that was the battle. As I said, this battle didn't, have a really na have, didn't really have a name. So I'll just call it the ambush of Onomarchus. And hope you guys enjoyed this battle. Good game to my opponent, the Great Mongol.